Hey YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines, and this is the result of a portrait edit I just did in Luminar. I'm going to let you guys look at how it happened and how I got to this beautiful image of Audrey today in Luminar 4.1 tutorial with Jacques Gaines. Stay tuned. Just remember, people, that I am a Luminar partner. If you are interested in getting the software at a rebate, I have a rebate code within the description and also a link. If you click on both, a little part of that goes to my channel and supporting my channel. So if you do buy the software, it is always appreciated. So stay tuned and let's do this edit. So YouTubers, I am going to be working on a edit of a portrait of Audrey right here. I did this a while back. I'll give you guys the link to the actual video of uh, this shoot. It was a lot of fun. Audrey was kind of cool. Uh, she's not a model. She's not a professional model, but she I find she looks just fantastic. Really does look great. So I am using 4.1 Luminar as a standalone. Normally, if anyone checks out my station, you'll realize that I do use Luminar mostly as a plugin within Photoshop. But today, I'm going to use it as a standalone and see if some of the exporting features and performance features on 4.1 that are promised actually exist. So let's check it out right now. So first let's do an edit of this. Uh, I will check out, uh, look at the depth of field. That's crazy. I just realized how small the depth of field is. It's barely on her eye. And, uh, and that's funny because you can see me in the shot. That's too funny. I'm in her eye. There I am in my pose. <laughs> okay. So what I always do when I work in Luminar as a standalone is I always start with the Pro tab to begin. I do that firstly and because I just think it's kind of cool. And the other thing I do do is I work a lot with layers when I use Luminar as a standalone. So here we go. I work with contrast right off the bat. This, by the way, is a raw file. And it's a RAF. That means if it's an ARAF, that means it's within the Fuji ecosystem. Okay, I'm just gonna go play a bit with that. Midtones. Play with the midtone contrast. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm not a crazy fan of doing a lot of stuff in that. Okay, color enhancer, photo filter, sprit toning. I'm not gonna touch any of that right now. Let's go right into the canvas. So you can do all the simple things like crop rotate. Let's start with crop. We'll go to uh, the ratio that we want. I like to work in 5-4 a lot of times. And I also like to work in 5-4 you know, on vertical. When it comes to portraits, I find is nice. Let's get her to fill the screen. Uh, just a bit like Photoshop in the sense that let's get her at the top there. I like getting the color, the color at the bottom there. You see that color? She was wearing... Um, a sort of um, furry coat it was kind of cool. Yeah, let me just straighten that just a tiny bit. There we go. I like that. And I will go done. And it'll crop for me. I'm nice and close. Now, here's the fun part about Luminar. So what I do with a portrait is I want to show you guys that you can do a lot of great stuff with the portrait editor really, really quick and fast. So let's try that out. So we go over here over to the smiley face, which is the portrait tabs. Oh, they're all right here. And uh, start from the top and go down. So you start with AI Skin Enhancer. What I like to say is that it replaces you using the healing brush, the clone stamp tool, and anything involving frequency separation. It basically does all of that stuff for you in one shot, in one slider. And it's surprisingly good. Here, I'll show you what we can do. So if I just move this up to, let's say, 90%, um, I'm just going to show you before and after. Now, this is before. That's what uh, Audrey looks like. I mean, she just looks great. I mean, there's a couple of faults, maybe, when you look at her skin. But here's what happens when you use the AI Skin Enhancer. Okay, so it comes in and it really just sort of smooths out her skin and makes it look great. I'm going to bring this down just a tiny bit because I like to get a bit of the naturalness of the person in the shot. What I will do next after doing this is I will mostly go to edit mask. Now, a lot of people say, why do you go to edit mask? Because 
AI skin enhancer is artificially intelligently going to get the skin and nothing else. You are right, but it doesn't matter sometimes to bring in the natural feeling of the fact having actual skin texture. I like to paint in where I want that effect to go. So what I do when I do that is that I go into edit mask and I use the brush. I go over here and I make sure I can see the brush with this little point here. And as you start painting in, you basically invert whatever the mask is. So as soon as I brush in, everything now does not have the effect. And wherever I paint in, I will get the effect. So I will put that in here, in her skin here. Now, a lot of people are going to say, why are you doing this? Why? Okay, let me back up a tiny bit. There you go. Okay. I like to keep lips and different parts of the person's body a tiny bit natural. Therefore, I like to pull away this effect in certain places. To pull away the effect, you basically go to erase and you can make your mask go away in certain spots. Lips and sometimes when I go to cheek, I like to also bring it out. What I do here is that I go size, opacity of the brush, I bring it down really low. It just allows you to control how much of this effect you're having. And as I said before, those who believe in the artificial intelligence and have total faith in Luminar to pick what's supposed to be edited, go ahead and do it. But I like to, you know, brush it in where I like it. Now, let's take away the mask to see what that looks like. Now, we're going to go to the before and after. Okay, good stuff. We used a before and after. That's after. This is before. After, let's zoom in there. So you can see I pulled away a tiny bit here. There's quite a few little imperfections. So what I'm going to do is brush in a tiny bit more of that effect. Uh, brush, I will go, I want to see my mask. And I'll brush that in. Okay. Brush that in. Probably go around here. Brush that in a tiny bit more here. Like that. There you go. There you go. Let's pull the mask away. See what that looks like. There you go. Good stuff. Let's do the before and after to see. See, especially right, right here on the cheek, you can see where it's actually affecting the shot quite a bit. So that's what I do. Normally I go to Skin Enhancer and the next step is that I pull out and I will go to Portrait Enhancer and now we can play and have fun with portraits. Let's do this. First one up here is Face Light. I can actually bring up how much light is just on the face. I will not touch that too much because it's pretty well lit. No red eye removal. Eye whitening. This will whiten the whites of the eyes. You can see that happening right now. Here. There you go. Just want to pull that off so you can see the difference. There you go. Don't go too nuts on this. Eye Enhancer right here. Eye Enhancer with Luminar replaces sharpening, dodging where you see uh, catch lights in the eyes. And it does all that stuff in one shot. So here we go. Let's pull this up. See what it does. Let's check it out. It's pretty darn good. What I'm amazed about this is that it for some reason sort of knows that the eyes are brown. That's before, that's after, before, after. So you can see it's really enhancing the eyes there. Uh, next step is dark circles removal. Dark circles removal has a lot to do with when you shoot in sunlight. And what happens in sunlight at, uh, let's say, midday is that the sun is very high. So the brow of the person makes a shadow underneath and makes these little circles under the eyes. A lot of people call raccoon eyes. So dark circles removal will lighten up the area under. See that happening right there? It lightens up the area underneath the eyes. We did not have that on that day because it was it was an overcast day, so we were fine. Uh, therefore, I will not touch that. Now I'll pull back, and now we can. Let's get rid of the before and after, and we'll slim the face. I just want to show you this. Audrey is definitely a slim girl, so we don't have to go too nuts, but 
here's when you actually use slim face so if you're working for let's say Vogue or something like that where they uh, ask you to have uh, a model that weighs 90 pounds this might be practical for you you can slim face let's just show you with a little bit of a before and after what's really cool is that it knows where to go to slim the face so that it actually still looks real this is before and this is after before after I'm going to slim the face a tiny bit just just so you can see it in, in in you know for my personal taste I would never slim the face but it doesn't matter I just wanted to show you you can also enlarge eyes here make them just a tiny bit bigger in the case of Audrey here I would enlarge her eyes just a tiny bit but not too much uh, if you go nuts I just want to show you what it would look like if you went a bit crazy eyebrow improve again replaces when you start to dodge and burn 90% of you guys out there when you dodge and burn what do you do you burn your eyebrows you burn your eyelashes and you do all that stuff so in this case I would definitely suggest to use the eyebrow improve it definitely works really really well it works super well there you go uh, now let's look at it before and after concentrate on the eyebrows everybody uh, let's just go here before and after before and after one more time before and after really doing a great job Luminar does a great job when it comes to portraits it's pretty unbelievable now I'm going to show you guys this again right here lip saturation lip redness lip darkening and teeth whitening we got no teeth so we can't use this slider lip saturation you can saturate the lips bring them and make them more pulpy lip redness you can make those lips more red and lips darkening now I like to use lip darkening a tiny bit and saturation I do not like to use lip redness I'm just a personal feeling of mine is that I just don't like the look of red lips and lipstick and lipsticky shots I'm not a big fan so that I just wanted to tell you that that it's not something that's really I'm crazy about so that's it so that's what we did inside of AI skin enhancer and portrait enhancer both of these things now here's what we had before really quick so we can look at it that's the before shot and that's the after shot pretty flawless in here now a couple of other things you can do is you can do high key which uh, here we go let me slide that it brings in sort of something I guess a lot of portrait photographers like I don't like high key at all not in the slightest I do like or Orton effect quite a bit and I like Orton effect type 2 not type 1 let me just drag up type 2 so you can see type 1 so you can see it it's really an effect from that comes from airbrushing from the 80s and stuff like that but if you take type 2 what I find is that it's more gradual and it's nice to look at it really is nice Let's again go look at the before and after. I like to look at the before and after just so you guys can get a feel of what's going on. That's before and that is after. The eyes are a bit wider. Mascara makeup shows better. Here's without the Orton effect and that's with it. So it blurs out everything but blurs out just the things you like to see blurred. Orton effect type 2. I do not touch Orton effect type 1. Let me pull out of this there you go that's the shot now uh, the next thing we can go into after I deal with the portrait edits that I've just done I really do like to go into creative in creative you can play with a couple of things you can play with sun rays depending on your shot obviously in this shot you don't play with sun rays too much let's say I put a sun ray here and I place place sun center I can bring it over here and emulate a light source but it's just too tight of a shot for me to do that uh, the next thing is you have um, sky replacement which you can't do here dramatic is something you can do let's say I pull that up you're gonna get some high contrast and you know I think it's a it's a melange of matte look and a couple of other things together matte look you can pull that up as well let me pull that up you can get a shot you know you're getting shots with one slider that really are dramatic if this is your taste 
you know, I want to show you guys all the different types of things you can get out of Luminar 4.1. And not just the, uh, the, you know, just get everything just so I wanted to show you this. So there's matte look. If you like this look, you can have it. Here's without the matte look. Here's with. Let's see the whole image without and with. Without and with. Cool. Very, very cool. So I don't personally like matte look that much. I really do like this image. I find it's natural and a bit nice. Now, then, one of the things I really do love is mystical. Uh, now, let me pull this up so you can see what it does. It's it's a combination of Orton effect, a couple of other things at the same time. And what's cool is that you can go and you can play with it in the shadows and bring it out of the shadows. And that's a lot of fun. You also have advanced settings. You can make it less smooth, more sharp, and stuff like that. In this case, I have to tap myself on the back because I think the image, the initial image, is just so nice right off the bat that I wouldn't touch it more than that. So I will not be putting Mystical, but I'm just telling you guys that Mystical has a lot of great little... I use it a lot. I do use it a lot, especially when I do boudoir photography. I like to use Mystical because it brings in a sort of element of beauty and softness and sensuality that's a lot of fun uh, color styles LUTs I want to tell you guys right off the bat that I really love Luminar's LUTs what are LUTs LUTs are look up table so it's a color look up table it's instructions telling the software this is how you're gonna treat the colors in the shot so it's a look it's a lot like filters you have within Instagram. It's very similar, but it's more elaborate and a lot more fun within Luminar. You'll find out that anyone out there, and I've been pushing so hard to tell Luminar, listen guys, you got to come out with a mobile app. It's just going to kick ass because their LUTs are crazy. And let's get into the LUTs and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's start with choose LUT. Let me just go through them. First of all, right off the bat, comparing Luminar LUTs to Photoshop LUTs, you have to pick the LUT in Photoshop to see it. In Luminar, all you got to do is hover over the LUT and you get to see it. So if I go to Anaheim right here, I see what the look looks like. Bakersfield, Long Beach, Los Angeles, Palm Springs. They show up right away and it's a lot. It's really, really cool. The color LUTs in Luminar to me are hands down better than Photoshop in every single way. But I just wanted to show you this. So you can play with some of the LUTs right here if you want a warm look, Riverside. San Diego gives you a nice cold look. Santa Barbara, again, another warm look, 1960. It's got a process, 1960. It washes out the image a bit. Beijing, candlelight. Give it time to show us. Color punch cold. Look at that. I'm going to take Color Punch Cold. I'm a Luminar partner. Click up my link below and at least get the free download. Download it. Just look at the software. See what it's like. I mean, it's worth the price just for the friggin' looks, just for those filters. So I'm going to take Color Punch Gold. Now, remember, what is also great about Luminar is that you have Edit Mask. And you know how I edited before the effect on the skin? You can do the same thing within your color LUT IE filter. So I just wanted to tell you guys that. Other stuff you have here is texture overlay. If you want to put a texture, that's it. I think that's a special effect. If you want to make it look old, you can bring in a texture of old film or something like that. You also have film grain. And I just wanted to show you how their film grain is. It's, it's pretty darn nice. It's a nice film grain. I really like it. There's also glow, glow. There's also fog here where you can bring in, just have light fog, you have dark fog, and you can bring that in and affect your photo even more. To me, this is really great. I think I'm going to go with this shot right here. I'm in the LUT also, you can increase the amount you have it, and you can decrease the amount. I tend to be a photographer that likes to be subtle, but this is probably the strongest amount I'd have a LUT. You can play with contrast and saturation right here, and it saturates your shot more and more. 
But I think right there, Audrey looks fantastic. I really do think this is the shot and how I'm going to put it up on Instagram today, baby. Here we go. So we go file and we go over here to export. When we press export, we decide what format we want it in. I want it in JPEG. I want to browse and I want to go to my file, which is called this PC sounds. Sorry about that, guys. You're starting to know what's inside my C PC. Google Drive, Instagram. Maybe I should do a video on how to, um, here we go. I think I got one for Audrey. Okay. Google Drive, file name. Let's call it Audrey. Portrait. Audrey Portrait. There you go. JPEG. Sharpen none. Resize. Actual size. You can play with this quite a bit. I wouldn't touch it. Maybe touch it later on or something like that. Resolution, 240 pixels per inch quality. Bring it all the way up and we export. Now, 4.1 has promised that this exporting uh, time would be a lot shorter. And uh, there you go. So I think it's a tiny bit shorter than it used to be. But it still is quite long. Just It's a long thing. It's long within Luminar. So there you go. There you guys have it. My portrait edit in 4.1. We looked at exporting. We looked at uh, color styles, the LUTs within 4.1, the mystical look, dramatic look, portrait editing tab, the pro tab. We looked at uh, right here canvas and the elements and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, comment, tell me what you think. Remember, I am a Luminar partner. Therefore, if you do want to buy the software, you can get a rebate using my rebate code. It is in the description. I hope you've enjoyed. You guys like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.